Well, amen. Good evening. Glad you are here. Uh, we spent uh, several weeks leading up to Easter and just focused on the cross and this side of the empty tomb. I- I'm not quite ready to leave the hope of the resurrection yet. So uh, I'm going to give you a quick sermonette on um, just on the hope of the resurrection and then uh, Next week, we'll go back to our, our uh, walk through uh, heaven and pick up that series. Um, there was a young boy who was in the backyard playing baseball by himself, and he was throwing the ball up and, and trying to hit it. And that, like a lot of young boys do, right? They, they, uh, it's, it's the World Series, and it's the bottom of the ninth, and the bases are loaded. There are two outs, and we are down by one. And he throws the ball in the air, and he swings, oh, strike one. All right, all right. And he, he gets back up, and he's ready, and he throws the ball up, and he swings, strike two. And then he really digs in, and here it is, the bottom of the ninth. They got to have this hit and he throws the ball up and he swings and he misses and he gets up he dusts himself off and he says wow what a pitcher (laughs) you see what I want you to see real briefly this evening is that from everyone else's perspective no one wanted Jesus to go to the cross No one wanted him to die. You see, it's hard for us to imagine the absolute despair and confusion that the apostles felt between Friday and Sunday. It's hard for us to imagine because we already know the ending. Okay, it's like any movie where you already know the dramatic ending. You can't unsee that. But you have to understand, for the disciples, Jesus is dead. And they do not know that this is just a scene and that the end of the story has not yet come. They have no inkling of a resurrection. It's dark. They're hopeless. In fact, think through the numerous accounts that were told as you read through the Gospels. We're immediately told of Joseph of Arimathea, who's going to come and and offer his tomb for Jesus to be laid in. We're told that Joseph was actually a secret disciple of Jesus, okay? Um, Luke tells us that Joseph was waiting for the kingdom of God. He sees Jesus' death as if, All hope has vanished. As if, I guess the kingdom of God isn't here then. There are a group of women who have followed Jesus from Galilee. They have followed him from Galilee all the way leading to Jerusalem. They were there for his triumphal entry. They have all hope and expectation that they're ushering in the new king. Pause for a moment and feel their pain and confusion. Questions begin to arise in their mind. Where was God when this pure evil raged? Their thoughts get cloudy. Some sit quietly in shock while others are emotionally out of control. And after a long silence, someone screams, we didn't even get to prepare his body. What about the disciples? What about the shame of Peter as he over and over in his mind thought, I failed him. Maybe I could have stopped it. I failed him. I failed him. We are told that the disciples are terrified and afraid that they are hiding in an upper room. They have seen what the leaders in Jerusalem have done to Jesus, and now they fear it will happen to them. They can't piece any of the pieces together. They saw him transformed 
on the Mount of Transfiguration. They saw it. How does any of this make sense? Furthermore, we're told about two that were walking along the road to Emmaus. In their brief interaction, they say, we were hoping that it was this Jesus who was going to redeem Israel. You see, in other words, they were hoping that Jesus would overthrow the Romans, restore Israel back to its prominence and its kingdom. They were thinking big in terms of Jesus. But now they're thoroughly confused. I guess the rulers were right. You see, they're all filled with fear and confusion. There isn't a flicker of hope. Again, they don't know that this is just a scene and not the end of the story. But what are the disciples missing? That God is the author of this story. That God is in control. You see, if it were up to the women, they would have just kept Jesus safe. If it were up to the nation, those who were longing and looking for the Messiah to come, he would have just overthrown the Romans. If it were up to the crowd who was badgering him, he would have gotten down from that cross and saved himself. Then we will believe. But none of them know. None of them know. Why? Because we underestimate God. First of all, we underestimate the holiness of God, of what it genuinely takes to save us from our sin. But we also underestimate the love of God in spite of our sin. Guys, the empty tomb marks the victory of King Jesus who did not save himself as the cross or as the crowd demanded. He did not save himself and prove in their eyes that he was the Messiah. Why? Because he was saving us. Because he was saving us. God was the author of that. Why didn't Jesus rise up over the Romans and restore the nation as they had hoped? Because he was rising from the dead. You see, oh foolish men, how we quickly limit and forget all that God has done and that he's promised. You see, the resurrection is the ultimate vindication that Jesus is the Messiah. It is the ultimate vindication that Jesus is the Son of God and that our sin has been paid for. And if it were up to us and everyone else he would have stopped so far short. But instead, what was God authoring? Life. Eternal life. Redemption. Hope. Aren't you glad that he overcame death? That he overcame sin? That he brought about eternal life? So let's quickly apply this to ourselves because how often in our own lives whatever God is asking us to let go of or to obey and walk out and take those steps of faith, how often we say, no, 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 no. Let me write this portion. I know how it should go. Or we're filled with fear and confusion. But can we not look at the empty tomb? Can we not look at the fact that no one knew what God was up to? And can we not see the life on the other side and say to your own circumstances, he will produce life in me. He will. He will. If he has given his son for me, 
Yes, I see the circumstances in front of me. No, it may not make sense, but I trust him. He is worthy of my trust. He is worthy of it all. He is worthy of my obedience. I trust him against everything else. Why? Because the tomb is empty and he rose from the dead. And it is greater than I ever would have asked for. Than I ever would have asked for eternal life in him. Will you pray with me? Our heavenly father, this evening, we cry out from our hearts that we love you and that we trust you and that you are the magnificent author of eternal life and that you have saved us, that you've opened our eyes to see it and now with our lives, we trust you. God, forgive us that we fill with fear and confusion and doubt at the circumstances that are placed in front of us, but as our eyes are lifted up and we remember the truth of the cross and the empty grave, we say again, we trust you. We trust you with our whole lives. You are worthy and you always call us forward to life. And we believe that and we trust you. In Jesus' name, amen.